Welcome back to Hardball. Barack Obama made history in 2008 when he was elected this country's first African-American president. Looking ahead to 2016, it's undeniable that the presumptive Democratic favorite and frontrunner is a woman, former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton, who could very well make history as the first female nominee or first female president. We also have a record number of Hispanics and openly gay members of Congress. But out of 535 members of Congress, not a single one is a self-described atheist. A 2012 Pew report revealed that 7% of Americans don't believe in a higher power, which leaves 15 million Americans underrepresented in government. A Gallup poll found that while 68% of Americans would vote for a well-qualified, openly gay candidate, only 54% said they would vote for a well-qualified atheist. Indeed, atheism appears to be a poison pill in electoral politics. In 2007, Congressman Pete Stark, a Democrat from California, was the first member of Congress to admit to being atheist, but even he softened his language to officially identify himself as, quote, a Unitarian who does not believe in a supreme being. And listen carefully to this clip from HBO's Real Time with Bill Maher. It was last August with retired Congressman Barney Frank on this subject. Okay, uh, Barney Frank, do you feel more liberated being out of Congress? Oh, you must. Oh, absolutely. I, I don't have to worry that when the phone rings, it's somebody who's screwed something up and says right. it's my responsibility to unscrew it. Although you, you know, you were in a fairly safe district. You were not one of those Congress people who have to worry about every little thing. You could come on this show and sit next to a pot-smoking atheist, and it wouldn't bother you. And oh, I, which pot-smoking atheist were you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> but, um... Oh, you are liberated. Ron Reagan is an MSNBC political analyst. Jennifer Michael Heck is an author and professor at the New School, and she just wrote a big article in Politico magazine about atheism called The Last Taboo. Okay, Jennifer, you were on your sofa, you were watching Bill Maher that night, you saw that exchange, and you said what to yourself? Well, I was glad, uh, but I was disappointed that he hadn't done it while he was still in office. I think it makes a, a big difference if you just imagine a room full of a hundred white men and imagine one black or Latino woman walking in the room. The conversation changes ever so much. Uh, it matters if people know who you are and you stand up for what you believe. And the point is that you know, Barney Frank had no problem coming out as a gay man, and, and people were accepting of that. But the atheism he saved until he was already out the door. Ron Reagan, let me ask you this. If people tell a pollster, and, and the totality is that 7% are atheists, I say there's a hidden vote there. If they, if they admit to it, it's probably in double digits. What's your hunch? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would guess that that's probably true. I think there are probably many atheist members of Congress who simply can't admit to that. And, and let's be honest, Michael, we're all atheists in a way. You don't believe in the divinity of Zeus, do you? Well, I guess you're an atheist then. <laughs> Gods come and go. It's just a question of which God you don't believe in. Uh, so, yeah, I, I, would, I imagine there are a lot of atheists in Congress right now. And so right. I mean, so out of 535, it's, it's not that they aren't there. It's that they don't feel comfortable in admitting it. And I'm wondering exactly. if it's because no one has challenged the hypothesis. I mean, the hypothesis is, oh, you can't get elected to Congress if you say you're an agnostic or an atheist. Maybe it's because no one who's otherwise credible stands up and says, these are my beliefs. I do indeed have a moral compass and I'm running. And then we would see once and for all what would happen. Ron, what do you think the outcome would be? Uh, yeah, I think that would be very helpful. I agree with Jennifer. I read her excellent article, and, uh, and, and I know that she feels that uh, members of Congress who are atheists uh, should come out. And I, I agree with, uh, with that. There, there are two things here when, when you talk about atheism in, in politics. One is the idea of the moral compass that you brought up. There are people who are religionists who believe that without uh, reference to some theology, you can't tell right from wrong. How does an atheist know what is, what's the good and the, and the evil thing to do, if you will? Beyond that, though, there is an implicit threat to the religion religionist in the very existence of an atheism. If you organize your, your entire life around the idea of some, some man's divinity, let's say 2,000 years ago, and there's somebody who's looking at you as if you're crazy to think that, that's a real rebuke to what, what is, in a sense, the core of your, your life your, and, your, and your beliefs, and that's very threatening to people. Jennifer, in your piece in Politico magazine, you said that 
there's a much richer tradition in American atheism among our past presidents than people realize. And, and here are a few of the presidents that you mentioned as having atheistic tendencies. John Adams, Thomas Jefferson, James Monroe, Abraham Lincoln, William Howard Taft, which leads me to the question, is America ready today for an official atheist to be president? Pick out your favorite on that list, Jennifer, and, and, and tell me what justifies you to say that they had atheistic tendencies. Well, we have a wonderful letter from Jefferson to his nephew, a favorite nephew, in which he says, question everything, even the existence of God. And if you come to not believe in him, you will do virtuous things for the good feelings it gives you and for the, for the affection that you get from other people. Uh, Taft was called an atheist uh, right at the turn of the 20th century, and he didn't deny it. He just kept going to Unitarian Church, which was um, a pretty agnostic place. Uh, Lincoln, after he died, uh, several of his closest companions, including his wife, said that he had no faith or hope in any of the meanings that we think of today, that he never let it pass his lips, that he believed in anything about the Christian theology. Um, so really, o overall, I, I wrote a book called Doubt a History, which tells about irreligion all over the world throughout history and it shocked me how much this stuff comes and goes there are periods of time where it seems impossible for atheists to coexist easily with with religionists but there have been many times when when it's not and and for us we're just getting out of the cold war it was much easier to be an american atheist out loud and proud in the first part of the twentieth century but with with communist atheism uh, there began, began to be a treasonous sense to the idea of, of atheism. And everything got kind of shut down. And that's when, in the 50s, God went on the money and God went in the pledge. But ever since uh, the Soviet Union fell and then 9-11, and, and now our most murderous uh, tensions are with people who consider us secular and themselves much more rabidly religious, uh, it's time for a change. Clearly, the politics and the mood of the country is changing because of these political well, differences. Well, I agree with you. I'm anxious to see someone test the hypothesis. For what it's worth, I, I aired this with you, Jennifer, on the radio, and I was overwhelmed with uh, callers who said, I want to know that a politician can distinguish right from wrong. It's not important to me that they're pointing at a particular book in order to come to that judgment. Anyway, thank you both, Ron Reagan, and thank you, Jennifer Hecht. Thank